Roswell Flight Test Crew here. Today we're going to take this Gowie 330X and replace its GU344 flight control system with... A NASA from UAVproducts.com. Okay, so here we go, GU344 removal. I'm going to take... First, unplug my little wires here. Let's pull these little guys out of here. And let's separate from the receiver. Carefully pry it up using something that you not gonna damage the frame. Okay, next, just gotta remove this little bit that was left over from the previous adhesive. Clean the surface here, it's probably dirty from the last adhesive that was on there. So a little alcohol swab. And I like to use a paper towel and kind of dry it off. In the box we have these little 3M adhesive strips. Since we have a large hole here in the center, I'm going to cut around them. Just take this and cut it in half. and use the parts I can. Next, going to remove the top of the adhesive here, exposing the adhesive itself very carefully. The front of the NASA is the part with the motors hooked in. So, the idea is here to get it as absolutely straight as possible on the chassis. So typically use one eye and try to get it center and straight. As long as you don't press down on the adhesive, you can kind of reposition it a little bit until it's perfect. The better job you do at this, the better it'll fly. Now, Looks pretty straight to me. So at this point, just apply a little bit of pressure. Let the adhesive set. Here I'm wiring up the versatile unit for power and connecting it to the NASA. This will just tuck away on the inside, and of course I can still get to the programmer. The motors are labeled M1, M2, M3, M4. Just plug the corresponding motor in. It's listed in the software over here, so M1, M2, M3, M4 for this configuration, B and X. On the other side, we have to hook our small wires here to the receiver. Okay, that was the aux one connector, which in this case I'm hooking to the X1 on the brain over here. The X1 will be used to make adjustments to the flight control system. Uh, I'm going to bind that to the small knob on the DX8 transmitter we use. On the receiver here, these correspond. So A, aileron, E, elevator, T, throttle, R, rudder. All right, so what have you got there? Well, I've got the NASA installed in a Gowie 330X frame. All right, let's go see how she flies. Mm -hmm. Okay, what we're doing here with our, our new install is we're going to be setting up the stability by binding this knob here to the gain settings. I'm going to plug the computer into the NASA using the versatile unit. And at this point, we have to power up the craft, activate our receiver. The good thing is it won't arm itself as long as it's plugged into the PC. So you can safely manipulate your controls. Now, I'm setting position this AUX3 right smack in the middle because I want to be able to go a little either way with the setting here. With the knob set to the center, I'm going to take and set both of these to X1, which is where I have this plugged into. Now if I go up, the beam goes up, down the gain goes down. At this point, I can unplug the craft from the computer. Now we're ready to fly. Okay, I'm going to intentionally put in a very high gain setting so you can see how it reacts to that. 
with the gain too high, the, the, the craft will oscillate wildly. Um, so basically, the higher the gain, the worse the oscillation gets. Lower the gain until the oscillation stops. With the knob too low, it wanders around all on its own. Right now it's kind of wandering a bit left and right. And I'm correcting it, but it's, it's doing it on its own. You want to find the point at which it which it stops oscillating, but as high as you can be without oscillating, essentially. And that's the best point. It'll be locked in solid at that point. In this test here, we're going to simulate a low battery condition by triggering failsafe manually. And failsafe, engage. For our final test of the nozzle on board the Gowie 330X, we're going to try the Frisbee. So what do we think? Nozzle 330X upgrade? Worth it. Alright, we'll see you next time. Fly safe.